In this video, we're going to continue looking at how to graph trig functions. And we're going to look at what happens when you have trig functions in the form of y equals a sine nx uh, with x, uh, x minus b in brackets, or uh, y equals a cos nx minus b with x minus b in brackets. What we're going to do is we're going to look at trig equations which come in this form, and we're going to look at the effect of changing b. Okay, so b may well be a, a positive term or may well be a negative term. So let's have a look and see what happens. Here we have the function y equals sine x. Now, we want to think about the function y equals sine of x minus 20. Now, when you think of the function y equals sine x, that's your angle. Now, you know that when that angle there is, for example, uh, 0, you get a value of 0 because sine of 0 is 0. And you know when that angle is 90, you know that you get a value of 1, because sine of 90 is 1. Now, what about down here? That is your angle. So what value of x is going to give you an angle of 0? And what value of x is going to give you an angle of 90? Let's have a wee think about it. Now, to get an angle of 0, x would have to take a value of 20. So it's when x is 20 that you have a sine value of 0, because 20 minus 20 is 0. And it's not that when x is, ni is 90 that you have uh, your angle being 90. In this case, your, your, your value for x has to be 110, because 110 minus, 90, minus 20 sorry, gives you 90. So in order for you to get a value of 1, you need to take an angle of 110 because sine of 110 minus 90 minus 20 sorry is sine of 90 so what you've got is a function which has moved by 20 degrees to the right hand side okay the whole thing has shifted horizontally along to the right and it's shifted along by 20 degrees so what you've got there is y equals sine x and to the right of it we find sine of x minus 20. It's been shifted 20 degrees to the right. What about if we think about sine of x plus 20? Now, again, as we said before, when it was negative 20, it moved to the right. Well, you can probably predict what's going to happen when we have positive 20 in brackets. Again, sine of 0 is 0. This is your angle. What do you need to produce an angle of 0? you would need x to be negative 20. So this one gives you a sine value of 0 when x, the angle, is negative 20. Okay. So what you're talking about is a function which shifts 20 degrees down towards the left. Okay. Now, there you have y equals cos x. y equals cos x minus 50. The fact that it's minus 50 means it's going to go 50 degrees to the right. Okay, you can see it there in red. And if we think about cos of x plus 50, using your blue function as your starting point, y equals cos x, x plus 50 means it's going to go 50 degrees to the left. And you can see that in black there. So plus 50 means 50 degrees towards the left. Minus 50 means 50 degrees towards the right. The whole function slides or shifts horizontally like that. Okay, so to summarize, <coughs> what can we say? When you have negative b in your bracket, that means to shift that means shift b degrees to the right, okay, in the positive direction. And when you have positive b in your bracket, that means that you're going down towards the negative direction. So you're shifting to the left. So you're going to shift the whole function b degrees to the left. Okay, so altering uh, the constant, if there is one, uh, that's part of, of your angle, uh, whether it's x plus b or x minus b, that shifts your function horizontally. Okay, plus b shifts it b to the left, minus b shifts it b to the right. Okay, let's see if we can find the equation to these graphs ourselves. Now, we'll just go through them one at a time, and you can pause the video if you wish and you can see if you can get the equation.
Okay, now I want you to pay attention to the amplitude as well as the horizontal shift. Now look at this. What have you got? You've got y equals something that looks like y equals cos of x. Now your amplitude is 0 0.5 because your maximum is 0 0.5, your minimum is negative 0 0.5. So it's going to be a half of cos. Now, what about, what's going on here? Now, you probably can't see this very well, but it's crossing there at 250. Okay, and this is crossing at 70. So the whole of your cycle has shifted 20 degrees to the left. So what goes in the bracket is x plus 20. And that's you done. Amplitude of a half, horizontal shift of 20 degrees to the left. Let's look at this one. Now what can you say? Your amplitude is 2. What you've got is a sine wave. So we'll start off by saying y equals 2 sine. Now, what's happened? This cycle is starting at 20. It's finishing at 380. So the whole thing has gone 20 degrees to the right. So your angle in here is going to be x, written as x minus 20. Okay? x minus 20. Because it's gone 20 degrees in the positive direction. Let's look at this one. This is a cosine wave. You're told that because sometimes, well, a sine wave is a cosine wave, but just shifted 90 degrees in a particular direction. So, we're going to start off by saying, what's your amplitude? It's 3. So y equals 3 cos. And if we're going to work out the angle, what's going on? Now, your maximum uh, is when x is 20. So that means the whole thing has moved over 20 degrees to the right. So we're going to say x minus 20. Okay, so you're no longer crossing at 90, you're crossing at 110. You're no longer crossing at 270, you're crossing at 290. The whole thing has gone 20 degrees to the right. Okay, and for this last one, what have we got? We've got a sine wave. Now our sine wave, the cycle starts there, and you can see that that is negative 20. So your cycle has moved 20 degrees to the left. So it's not crossing at 180 anymore, it's crossing at 160. So, what's your amplitude? The amplitude is 2.5. The range between the maximum and minimum is 5. Half of that is 2.5. So we say y equals 2.5, 2.5 sine. Now, what's happened? You have moved 20 degrees to the left. So what goes in the bracket is x plus 20. Okay? So that's how you um, determine the amount of, of horizontal shift that has taken taken place and that's how you write the equations of functions which involve uh, a degree of horizontal shift. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that you're becoming quite proficient now at being able to graph trig functions.